Hello again and welcome back to tutorial number 5 of this series. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how I created this composition using only clipping masks. Almost everything you see here has been done using a clipping mask. There are a few elements here, this, there are two shapes and a different size. There is a fire text here and there is a gradient um, in the background. So let's go into this uh, project I've created. And what we have here are two photos of fire I shot once. And we're going to start by creating a new layer in the background. It's just going to be a gradient. And let's create the gradient um, to go from red to yellow, because that's kind of the colors of a, of a fire. And we'll do something like this or like that. Now, before you start, I have to ask you a question. Um, do you see the face in this picture? Because um, because everyone who sees this picture immediately says, uh, hey, look, there's a face in that fire, you know, an eye and another eye and a nose and here's his mouth and uh, it has hair. So and I just had to uh, ask you. So if you do see the fire, just you are uh, creative and way to go. Anyway, back to our tutorial. So the first thing we're going to create now is a shape. And if you select the shape tool down here and go into custom shapes, this panel on the top will show up. And under the shape symbol, you have all kinds of different um, vector masks. We'll talk about vector masks in a different tutorial. In this one, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna create one and uh, show you how to use it as a clipping mask. And if you don't have all of these symbols, just click on the right arrow here and select all and click OK. And then they should all show up. And now we're gonna select the, the flames shape. And while pressing shift, when I'm dragging, I'm creating a nice proportional flame um, of about this size. And I'll move it down here. Now let's quickly go back to the other, to the finished composition. As you can see here, I have a flame inside of my shape. And that's what we're going to do now. Now this might be a bit confusing to those of you who are new to Photoshop. Since we've got used to the fact that the layer which is on top in the layer panel is a layer which will hide the layer underneath it. But when you use clipping masks, you're doing something different. And let's now see what I mean. As you can see now, my shape layer is above my other flames. But if I drag it in between my two flame photos, I won't see it anymore. If I move this layer to the side, I'll see my flame is above photo number one and underneath photo number two. And let's quickly rename this just so we're talking, just so you know what I'm talking about. So like I said, the shape is in between layer one and two. Now the reason I said a clipping mask might be confusing at the beginning is because what we're going to do now, we're going to use this shape or this layer to behave as a mask to the layer above it. And the way we do this is by clicking on our right click and creating a clipping mask. And as you can see now, my layer is inside or under my shape layer. And the way I like thinking about it is, is imagine layer number two is, is now peeking through the layer underneath it. Now that's why it's a bit confusing when using a clipping mask. And this way I can clip more than one layer into one mask. And the way I can do that is by simply dragging layer number one above layer number two. And as you can see now, it's hiding both my shape and layer number two, which is clipped underneath it. But if I create a clipping mask using the shortcut, which is Alt in between the two layers and clicking, you can now see that, that also layer number one is clipped into our shape mask. And I'm going to change the opacity so you see that we have two layers in here. If I move it around, I can make it smaller and take a layer and take shape two and make it smaller. And I can now see both of my layers clipped into my flame layer. Let's return them back to, to a bigger size and create a nice flame that we like. And like you can see, I can always adjust my opacity. I can always switch in between the layers. I can always play with my blending modes to get a different effect and um, everything will stay inside the borders of the shape I've created or the layer which my photos are clipped to. Now one other great thing which which we can do with the clipping masks is we can create effects like drop shadow, bevel and embos, outer glow or any kind of effect we want to create using the clipping mask and all the effects will be applied to the shape itself and I can create fantastic effects using that method. Now one tip which I recommend doing is that once you've finished creating your clipping mask and the content which is in it, go ahead and link them together and then when you drag them, they will move as one unit. If they're not linked, I can always by mistake grab one of the layers and move it. 
and then I completely destroy the effect that I've worked so hard on creating. So once you're done playing with your clipping mask, link the layers together. The next thing I've done is created some text. We're going to write fire, move it down here. And if you look at this text here, you see two things. One, it has some kind of twist on it. And second, it has fire inside of it as well. The best way to do this is by duplicating your layer. There are a few ways to do this. Control J on your in your layer panel, drag your layer down to the to the new layer, or click Alt and drag. Those are usually the ways I duplicate layers. Now, as you can see now, if I return my blending mode back to back to normal and my opacity back to 100, you can see that my layer is hiding everything which is underneath it, exactly like layers behave. But I want this fire photo to be clipped into the fire text. Just pay attention that if you've linked your layers and you've duplicated one of those layers, when you move it around, it will it will move all of the layers which are linked to it. So before you, you do anything else, unlink the layer by clicking down here. Now we're going to put the layer in about where we want it to be. We'll take our fire and put it underneath our layer and click Alt in between the two layers to create the fire. And if I want to have the exact same effects I've, I've used on my shape, I can click on Alt, drag my effects, up onto my fire text and there we go we created the exact same effect which we had on the on the shape layer and we can obviously go in and change it and um, make it look exactly like we want it to look now the way I did the twist is by selecting my text and up here we can warp our text and if we click on it we can see this window opening and I selected twist you can select anything else which you think is more appropriate but I selected twist because I think it looks the best and I changed it a bit um, to something like like this obviously there's no correct way there's just uh, the way you think looks best I'll stay with that now the next thing I did I duplicated all of this content here by dragging them down into my new layer panel and I put them un underneath my first shape layer and then I simply scaled it up to about this size and I played with the opacity of the shape and took it down and turned it down a bit and that's the way I created the composition we saw at the beginning of this tutorial and I want to show you one more thing before we before we're done here I'm going to turn off all of my layers and put this layer in the middle since this is a vector mask I can change the mask itself I'll quickly show you this I can do it by for example adding an anchor point here and then moving it around and that way I can change my flame to anything else I want it to look like and this method of using a mask is way more convenient for these kind of things than using the, the the mask we've talked about in the previous tutorials and this is definitely something I'm going to cover in one of the next tutorials so the important things I want you to remember from this tutorial are at one a clipping mask clips to the layer underneath it and not to the layer above it, which we've said could be a bit confusing. Two, you can add effects to the mask itself, and doing that you can create very nice things. And three, remember to link the layers together when you are done, and that way you will prevent um, unwanted mistakes. So that's about it for today's tutorial. I want to thank you all for watching this, and I want to especially thank all of my new subscribers. It's great to see that in less than a month, this new series has reached just above 2,500 views and 50 new subscribers, so I just wanted to say thank you again to all of you for showing such interest in these tutorials, and I hope to see you back again here in tutorial number 6. Until then, bye bye.